If you would turn with me to Matthew 26, verse 36 through 46, it's on two different pages in the two different Bible options in your views. Matthew 26. Then Jesus went with them, his disciples, to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he went and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here, watch, and pray. And going a little farther, he fell on his face, and he prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he came to his disciples, and he found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you could not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, that you may not enter into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, thy will be done. <coughs> and he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand.
I stamped out the last drag of my cigarette, and as I turned to leave, his eyes had that thousand-yard stare you hear about people getting when they come back from Vietnam or wherever the war is this year. I gave him doubt. Doubt for him was a crack in the armor of arrogance with which he brushed off everything that might shake his beliefs about the world. And it looked like it got him good. <laughs> that reminds me of another one you might have heard. You all are uh, religious types around here, I'll bet you'll like this one. You've heard the one about Martin Luther, 95 theses on the door, and he gets shipped off to the emperor and the bishops, before rows of stern-looking men stands Marty, eight eyes ablaze, head back, curly hair, would have been flowing, dark robes. Here I stand, I can do no other. Oh, you should have seen him. What you don't hear about is how a few months before, when I would sit with Marty, him, slumped, head low, eyes to the floor, he's the one that got me back smoking, you know. <laughs> night after night, we'd stay up, him relentlessly rehearsing. I can't get ahead, Herr Joseph. I take one step with the spirit, one step in sin, I confess, I get absolved, and whoop, it's right back to the beginning. It's the merry-go-round of perdition, the spiraling water slide of a wasted life. It's purgatory for me for sure when I'm done. He didn't seem too concerned with my experience of purgatory, listening to him go on and on. Oh, I'm damned for sure. It was his confidence that got me. His confidence in the system. That he had to accrue spiritual interest on the positive side of some ledger and make it all balance out by the end of his life. I was done. So one night after half a pack and a few hours of his assured spiritual accounting, I gave him a gift. One flip, and doubt. The look in his eyes. Have you ever seen someone's entire worldview come crashing down around them? Your freshman philosophy class didn't have anything on this guy. Why I despair. For a moment. And then bam! Protestant Reformation, here we come. That Marty Luther, always sprinting with his ideas. 95 theses, here I stand, the whole shebang. But you would be amazed at what one good moment of doubt can do for a person like that. How did I get the gift, you ask? Now that, that was a long time ago. I'm a father, you know. That's complicated. He was my son, but his mom and I, we didn't have up. You see, he was one of those kids that was always asking why questions but more than just a why is the sky blue kind of stuff. For him it was, if Moses brought us out of Egypt, why are we under control of the Romans, Daddy? Daddy, why are there poor people? Why can't Gentiles bring a sacrifice into the holy place of the temple, Daddy? I was a carpenter! How was I supposed to answer these questions? The I didn't mind then. He was a good kid. He'd sit there pondering to himself while I was chiseling in the wood shop. But as he got older, he started having problems with him. One time, we were in Jerusalem for one of those feasts. And Jesus was supposed to be with his Aunt Merle, Mary's side. Now, the story you hear is something like, we forgot all about our precious baby boy and then realized, but well, we didn't even get that far. All of a sudden, one of his little follower friends comes running up. Mr. Joseph! Mr. Joseph! Oh boy, here we go. We were on back to the temple, and you should have seen the crowd. I rate. I thought they were going to stone him right there. I swoop in. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's my kid. He's weird. We know. I'm sorry. We get back on the road to Nazareth, and he's going on about my father's will, my father's house. Your father? I said, what are you talking about? I'm right here. Now his mother, she had all sorts of dreams for this kid. She had said she got them in visions one night. He could do no wrong in her eyes. But I, 
I was his father. Next year would have been his bar mitzvah, and he'd be a man, and he could go out on his own. When we arrived back home, I, I sat Jesus down and made him take a solemn vow on his birthright. See, we Jews back then had a tradition that a man couldn't write anything down in a book until he was 30 years old. And you could tell with this kid that whatever he said was going to get written down by someone. So I made him vow that he would not leave our household or talk to anyone about this stuff until his 30th birthday. What's that got to do with the gift, he said? Well, that boy, he, he kept his vow. He always did. But sometimes he was seething. That you brood of vipers thing, let's just say he practiced it in private before he took it out in public on the Pharisees. I was a good man. I listened to the rabbi every Saturday. I always brought my sacrifice to the temple. I paid my taxes to Caesar. It was God's will. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been that way, right? Pretty soon, we learned not to talk about religion or politics too much with each other. Then he turned 30, and we he did. Things were tough between us then. I, I didn't see him for, for another three years after he left. That's when I took up smoking the first time. He, he had made it back to Jerusalem this time, and, and tensions were high between him and the high priests. Crowds followed him, but mobs followed him as well. I would, I would try to go down to the shop and work, but my, my hands would shake so much it took me a week just to sand one table. Everyone knew that something was going to happen. Jerusalem's a small town, one square mile, 20,000 people, word gets around the well. I couldn't sleep. I, I light a cigarette, I, I go down to the workshop, I, I turn on the lantern, and, and there he's sitting. My head is throbbing like my heart, and I have a million words I want to say to him. But he starts before I get the chance. Dad, he says, I'm scared. They're going to kill me tomorrow, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Give up this stuff. You can come back to the shop. But for the first time, we were of one mind. It was too late for that now. He went out, and for some reason, in the darkness, I followed him. Just out of his eye shot. I, I sat like a beggar outside of the window in, in the room when they were having the Last Supper. I heard him say to his disciples, come with me, wait with me, watch and pray. So I went, I, I followed them, and I hid behind a tree in, in the Garden of Gethsemane when everyone else fell asleep. I told the whole thing to Mark later. That's how you got the story you heard today. I was the one who heard him pray, let this cup pass from me. But what I never told anyone was this. When those soldiers were dragging him away, right when they pulled his arms around his back, Jesus turned his head and his eyes met mine from all that way across. And there he gave me the gift. Amen.